I think it is about shopping with purpose and intent, isn't it? And I wonder how, you know, particularly for you as a brand, how you can encourage people to do that more, to shop with purpose, because I suppose there's that kind of conflict as a brand. Obviously, you want your brand to be super successful and you want to be, um, you know, for it to be financially successful and viable and for lots of people to be wearing your pieces. But then in the same breath, you don't want people to overbuy or um, just buy off the cuff rather than thinking about the purpose of the piece that they're buying. Yeah, absolutely. I think... Emma, as much as everybody, you know, aspires to have profitable businesses, etc. It's also about the purpose. And for us, you know, my absolute dream would come true would be about actually not just buying for yourself, but buying something that you can also share with your friends. Um, you know, I realized um, very early on, you know, when when I was kind of in my early 30s about actually, if you've bought something like an investment dress or a lovely piece, um, you know, do you think actually will some of your friends like to borrow it? And you you do the same. And and I think that's the same with Chapter as well and, and every other sort of um, clothing brand that wants to be sustainable. It's actually just think about the core. How can it be reused um, and how you can share it with your friends and family? You know, um, I think the good thing about um, our products is it's that we're trying to make sure that it's as versatile as possible and it has got grace in it. So it, you know, although you may be a size 12, you know, you could wear it if you were a size 10, you could probably, you know, wear it when you're, if you're a size 14. And it's just about ensuring that those, those beautiful pieces are shared and celebrated together. Um, and also like, you know, if you absolutely love a fashion piece, not be afraid that social media has seen it. So you can't wear it again. And I think that, you know, society will really change in the next few years. And it's not about, you know, um, having a different outfit for, for your Instagram every day. And it's about ensuring that you are being that conscious, purposeful buyer, um, which is really important in, in, in exactly everything we do. Hence, you know, when we do develop chapter pieces, we really look at, can they be timeless? And um, can they be of a great quality that you can keep washing and wearing and they still make you feel fabul fabulous, you know, a few years down the line? I love that. I love that it's the idea about having a collective wardrobe. And I think a lot of the rental platforms are really helping with that. There's so many pieces that I have that I rent out, but also friends that I know that are going to weddings and things this year and are looking at what they're going to buy, not just as a piece that they'll wear once for a wedding, as a piece that they'll then rent out. But then I love that you've also got people like uh, Rebel Wilson, who's been very honest and open on the red carpet, saying about her re-wearing her red carpet dresses. She's not just buying them, or I'll be giving them, um, and wearing them <laughs> once. She's making a point of re-wearing them on the red carpet over and over again so that people see that actually it's completely acceptable. You should be wearing your clothes multiple times. It shouldn't be a one-time thing. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the fashion world is kind of taking a bit of a, a bit of a 360. So there are, like you said, lots of amazing rental, um, rental companies out there. But I also find that, you know, just sharing that knowledge and advice, and sometimes it's easier to get something altered than it is to completely buy a new piece. And, you know, hopefully society works with us in those ways as well, going forward, just to ensure that there's less you know, less products going to landfill. Um, it still scares me, Emma, how much I see at clothes banks and charity shops and, and all these sorts of things. So anything we can do, I mean, we use, you know, um, recyclable fabrics for some of, our, some of the collection and, and all those things, but anything we can do to help that landfill um, is super important in this day and age. And actually we're then paving the way for the next generation in our kids and our grandkids. And I think so much of the younger generation are so much more savvy and aware than we were. Like when I was a teenager, I had no idea about fast fashion or landfill or anything like that or, you know, where the clothes went. I quite regularly would, you know, wear things and then it'd break and I'd think, oh, I'm just going to throw that away and buy a new one rather than thinking, oh, I'm going to fix that. And I think there seemed to be a kind of age of our parents and grandparents who would always make do amend and repair things and repurpose things and then 
kind of my generation and you know slightly before and slightly after me who really didn't understand that but then I think now the younger generation really do they there's so many that kind of look at vintage and that I see them on TikTok and they're making things and upcycling things and are so more consciously aware and socially conscious about the environment and about the planet that you know it does give us hope for the future it does and I think that it's here to stay and I think that's where it's really exciting to really um you know pave the way to the next generation and um even look at every decision we make to ensure that it's as eco and as fashion conscious as as fashion conscious as possible and I think that if we can embed those values not only in business and and sort of you know uh, bringing up our children but also doing that in daily life I think that those little things where we th sometimes think that they're just marginal gains or little gains actually can always just add up to that bigger picture which is just super important.